Hello, and welcome to the rollout ceremony for the AMPV, the first ever, a historic moment for the delivery of the first of its capability to the United States Army. I am pleased to have with me today Mr. Brian McVeigh, the project manager for Mounted Armored Vehicles of the United States Army. Uh, and Brian is my colleague and friend who has worked with me to get this vehicle where it is. Brian? Bill, thank you. You know, all of the efforts that have happened since this program started hasn't been on one team or the other. It's been a, com a combination of BAE's team, DCMA, and PM AMPV to build the vehicle that stands behind us. It's the engineers, the people from the warehouse, the contractors that are doing the developing of the fielding plans and the sustainment. All of these people are coming together today in what's represented behind me. And as you think about it, this vehicle is going to replace a vehicle that was, has been in the Army since 1965, the M113. As we look at the modernization of the Army, as we go bring this vehicle online, it's not only what we're doing today and tomorrow, but it's what we're seeing from the families that will be welcoming home warfighters over the next decades that are truly going to show the value of this platform. So on behalf of the United States Army, General Cummins, our PEO, thank you and your team for all you've done for us. Thanks, Brian. So there are two things I want you to take away from this uh, video. First, today is a celebration. Uh, it's a celebration of a lot of stuff that was overcome, a lot of tension and work between teams to get us where we are. But it is truly a celebration of historical proportions. We have not delivered, we, industry or the United States Army, have not delivered a brand new track combat vehicle since the 80s. So this is a historic moment that all of you should be very proud of. It, it took everybody, and by everybody I mean the collective team that represents, represented by Brian, uh, DCMA, the PM MAV team, ACC Warren, and then the collective team that, that I get the privilege of representing today, which is BAE Systems employees, a number of which are here today, socially distant in a COVID environment that we live in, and our industry partners who can't be here today because of the pandemic we're in. So it is truly a celebration. Uh, the second thing that I want everyone to remember is who the true stars are of today's event. First, it's this magnificent beast parked behind Brian and I that we are turning over to the United States Army. And secondly, it's all of you, the men and women who made this possible. Uh, if you think about where we have come uh, in the years to get to right here in this moment, it is, it is quite a story. First, the startup program, trying to get off its feet and get running, in, incorporating in all kinds of advanced uh, industry and advanced uh, tools into the system. We have the first robotic weld at weld station number four, physically lifts up the hull and positions the weld head to where it needs to be to get things done. Radiographic seam checks for the weld seams and on and on. Uh, as we were working through all of that in fab and weld with those men and women that do that work, what happens to us? We get punched in the mouth with a global pandemic. A global pandemic. I mean, come on, really? Th this is what you're going to do to us? Now, before we were struggling working through our challenges here in York, Pennsylvania, and this pandemic now ripples through the entire organization. How we communicate, how we collaborate and resolve problems, all has to be relooked and redone in order for us to continue to build. We could have stopped. Uh, and taking a two-month pause trying to figure out new processes. But Brian and I spoke and got together, and along with the Army, we decided to keep moving forward, incorporating in everything we could do to keep our work uh, team safe. Try, so try and think about a production line that now has to socially distance, has to wear face masks, uh, can't get in closed, tight spaces together. I mean, it, it's just an amazing challenge. And then our industry partners trying to get raw materials and going through the same things we are to get the parts here to get through assembly. What you have done, all of you, uh, is amazing. It's amazing. The cooperation with the Army, with DCMA, as they helped us understand how to do the inspections, how to work through a new vehicle, all of it comes together with the fruition of this capability. And it's not just one vehicle you deliver, it's five variants. Behind me is the Mission Command variant, and behind it sits the uh, general purpose vehicle, the mortar vehicle, medical evacuation, and a medical treatment vehicle. All of it coming down the line. So I couldn't be prouder of everything you have done. I am humbled to be a part of this large team and to represent all of you today uh, as we do a video, as opposed to the huge ceremony we should be doing, but uh, that's the COVID world we live in. So thank you all for everything you have done. Thank you for the, the perseverance 
and the attitude to get this stuff done. It, it is truly amazing, and it will benefit our soldiers. So in closing, thank you, Brian. Thank you to you and everybody on your team that helped us get here today. And thank, thank all of you for what you have done. As I said before, we have representatives from all the different functions here today with us working, and I just look forward to seeing where this vehicle is going to take the Army and BA systems into the future. Cool. Thank you. Yeah! Now we walk over.